Welcome, Bethany Church. Welcome, River Family BYG. We are going to be diving into another quiet time session. And we are again, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 to 4. We're going to be in the tail end of the book. And I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians 3 verses 16 through 23. And again, I know the Daily Bible is more than this, but I want to keep my focus around these couple verses. So let me read it and then we'll dive in. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about men. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are of Christ and Christ is of God. And this is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Gracious Father, thank you that we can gather together on this platform to dive into your word, to know and learn more about your word, and to know more about you, God. I want to lift up Bethany as a church, the river, BYG, Lord, as we are still going through a quarantine life. God, I pray for comfort. I pray for your presence to be in, in our lives, even though we have to sit behind a screen many of the times. God, May you be glorified, may you be magnified, and may our hearts be opened to hear your word and let it sink into our very hearts. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see in verse 16, Paul starts talking about the temple. He says, don't you know that you're God's temple and the spirit lives in you? And he goes on to say, God's temple is sacred, or in other translations, holy set apart that's what it means to be holy set apart he says you are that temple and what he's telling us is when we are in god we are holy we are sacred and god cares because he is a holy holy god he does he doesn't want anyone to defile his temple that's what paul is saying there but he goes on to say in the next couple verses Let me read it. It says, Do not deceive yourself. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. And Paul is saying this to the Corinthian church at this time because they were all about knowledge. All the people during this time, they're all about being filled with knowledge. You know, Greek, is people say it's, you know, like the start of a lot of philosophy. Um, philosophers, a lot of famous philosophers came out of Greece or the Greek culture. And it, it was true for the Corinthian church as well. They were all about knowledge. They were saying, you know, I follow Paul's teachings or I follow Apollos' teachings. It was all about knowledge. And Paul is saying, don't be deceived, everyone, that if you have knowledge in this world and you are filled and filled, it does not equate to being wise in the kingdom of God. And where do we see that? We see that in the very next verse. He says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. And another way I read this is, Wisdom in God's sight is foolishness to the world. And I feel like that is challenging because we don't want to look foolish in the world. But God is saying, If you want to be wise in me, it's going to be, you're going to look foolish in the world. You're going to be set apart. You're going to be holy, which means, again, to be set apart. 
And when I thought of this, I was thinking, I immediately thought of, well, first, where, where is the time that God showed us or Jesus made a, a decision that didn't make sense to the world, but in the kingdom, it was a, a clear choice. It was, it was wise to do. And I thought of, of the 99. When the shepherd leaves the 99 to go find the one. You know, there are many excuses we could say, you know, they're just sheep. Or it, it's just, we have the 99, why would you go out and look for the one? You're going to risk everything, you're going to risk your life all for the one? That doesn't make sense. I, I would be content with the 99. That doesn't make sense, but I want to point out that in God's kingdom, it is wise. It was a wise choice for him to go out and bring the one and leave the 99. And when I think of this, it automatically leads me to that Sunday school answer. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. When I thought, when I was meditating and thinking about this word of being wise in the Lord and foolish in the world, man, what, what God did to send his son down to this earth doesn't make any sense. Just like the one leaving the 99 to go find the one doesn't make any sense. God sent his one and only son to save the whole world who was, which was full of sin, idolatry, corrupt, immoral people. I mean, look at our world today. I mean, does it look like a, a world that is perfectly loving each other? No. But God knowing all things, knowing how much sin would be in our hearts, knowing how sinful we truly are, and knowing how deep our sin ran. He said, I'm going to send my one and only son who is going to live a perfect life on earth so that he could die on a cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And I hope all of us see that and we say, why? It doesn't make any sense why would anyone do that if any parents are listening it's you guys would know you would know so much better than we do because that attachment to your child is like no other and to say that you would sacrifice your child for a sinner for a murderer for an idolatrous corrupt immoral person doesn't make it doesn't even cross your mind not one, for one second because you love them, you love your child. But God said he so loved his son that he's gonna send him down so he could die so that we could be reconciled back to him. And all I'm trying to say here is, is that in the kingdom, it was wise. In the kingdom, God was saying, this is a wise choice. But to the world and to some of us, it doesn't, they were like, why would you do that? Why would you send your one and only son and not even just one son, but a perfect son? But in God, this was the wise king, what this was the wise choice. And so now that when Jesus died on that cross, what did he do? He paid for our sins because again, like Paul is saying, he's saying, you are a holy temple. So that when Jesus went to die on the cross and our sin ran deep and when he finally rose and resurrected us so that we could resurrect when he resurrected sorry and we can now be with the father now we can say where our sin ran deep god's grace runs deeper and now we can say we are clean all our stains are gone and this was all a result of God being wise in the kingdom, but foolish to the world. And so I want to encourage us, church, today, that when we challenge and, and ask God, God, may you give us the wisdom of your kingdom, even if it makes us look foolish to the world. Amen.